Welcome to a special edition of Got Invention Radio. I'm your host, Brian Freed, and tonight we have Jeremy Andrews. He's the CEO of Smart Money Entrepreneurs, and he's going to share some great insight to investing and raising money for your ideas, for your products, for your business, and also talk about a really exciting event that's going to be happening November 27th, 2012 in New York City. And Damon John and many other high-profile executives are going to be on hand. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate so, it. I'm glad to be here. Great. Thank you for uh, joining us again. I know you, you have some great information to share with the inventors, entrepreneurs listening about your event and also some advice and experience that, you've, that you have that you could share with the listeners. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself to start? Sure. Um, well, as you mentioned, I'm the founder of a financial technology company called Smart Money Entrepreneurs, which is a broker-dealer uh, crowdfunding platform. Some people may have heard of the, the crowdfunding idea of Kickstarter, Indiegogo. So we essentially connect entrepreneurs with investors who are looking for great deals to provide them with investment opportunities, and inventors, entrepreneurs who are looking for funding can hopefully receive capital to grow their business. And so we just started this company this year uh, after Obama, President Obama, had signed the Jobs Act, which is kind of trying to revolutionize how entrepreneurs get access to capital around the world. Okay. Well, that sounds interesting. What did you do before you started this company? Before I started the company, I actually was in finance for a while. I um, had been trading stocks since college, you know, learning the stock market, the ins and outs of, of the public markets. And I actually went into the institutional side of things. So I worked for uh, Tiger Management for a while and Prudential, which are two securities firms. And there I actually learned the ins and outs of raising capital and investing with uh, different skill sets in terms of the public markets. And from there I actually started to understand how uh, entrepreneurs, as a startup, trying to raise capital, uh, and actually grow your company from the ground up. And I started my first company in college, moved on to my second company you know, shortly after, uh, and as I mentioned before, Smart Money Entrepreneurs is my third company, so I'm pretty familiar with the process of raising capital, you know, going and vetting your idea to investors who may have the uh, opportunity to write you that, that check at the end of the day. Very interesting. And what type of products have, or services, I should say, or businesses have you seen raise money and be successful. Can you share any of those stories with us? Absolutely. So in the first uh, startup that I was a part of, it was actually in the real estate industry. And if anyone remembered the boom, of course, back in the day, you know, 2004, 2005, everything was, you know, really booming with the real estate. And obviously it's a little bit easier to get capital. Um, uh, I kind of find it depends on the timing that you're trying to raise. Uh, so, you know, we raise capital uh, pretty easily in the, in the housing boom. Um, and of course, the subsequent bust in 2008 kind of left people high and dry. But in the long run, the reason we were able to get the capital is because of three things, as I always mention to entrepreneurs. We had a great team, we had a solid idea, and we had the capacity to actually grow to a multi-million or even billion dollar business, which an investor, or anyone who's looking to invest in a company, is looking to grow their money. Um, but overall, inventors entrepreneurs, the, the biggest thing that I would recommend just in general is to make sure you have a solid idea and that you can defend any questions. Uh, that makes total sense. So now you have this event that's happening on November 27th. What exactly is going on there? <laughs> I know that Damon John is going to be there. I know that uh, there's some other high-profile executives. You're going to have... Uh, uh, donations being made to the Red Cross at that point, obviously, in, uh, from, from New York City, all that's happened uh, the last couple of weeks. Tell us a little bit about the event, Jeremy. Sure, and I want to you know, thank, um, thank you for mentioning that because we are donating the profits to the Red Cross and you know, the Hurricane Sandy in the aftermath. I have personal friends who are, are still actually displaced you know, and trying to recover from this, this major hurricane, so I think it's a, a good chance for the community in New York City, especially... Um, and surrounding areas to get together and really support uh, the, the ecosystem for entrepreneurship uh, and just trying to build a community there. So the event is called How Do You Get Funding from a Shark? And it features Damon John from ABC's show Shark Tank. If anyone has not seen the show, I think they're in the third season now. 
definitely check it out. It's a great opportunity to see how these investors who are literally giving their own money to these startups, what type of questions they ask, what type of startups coming on board are actually getting the funding from these investors. It's a good chance to take a look. It comes on Fridays at 8 p.m. Um, Damon John is an investor. He started a company called FUBU, and you know he grew that to a multi-billion dollar business. Some of the other investors on the panel include Brian Cohen, well-known in angel investor in New York City. He's the chairman of a group called New York Angels. Uh, he was the first, the very first investor in a company called Pinterest that some people may be familiar with. Uh, there are a few other investors involved on the panel, including um, Zach Ahrens, Charlie O'Donnell, who owns his venture fund. So it's a wide range of individuals who, on a daily basis, write checks for entrepreneurs. And anyone who comes to the event will really understand what it takes for an investor to write that check to you at the end of the day. Hmm. And what... What other uh, these uh, these other investors and different uh, guest uh, panelists that you have that are going to be there? Who else? Who else is there? So I mentioned Damon and Brian Cohen. Uh, one of the ones I can highlight, uh, like I said, Charlie O'Donnell. He is a angel investor. He actually um, worked at the two top venture capital firms called First Round Capital and Union Square Ventures, who are really well known in the city. Uh, and his investments. Um, you know, range from SalesCrunch, some of the other bigger tech companies uh, called Single Platform, Backupify. Uh, there's actually another CEO involved. Um, his name is Dane Atkinson. He serves as the CEO of Sumall, and it's a business he co-founded. Uh, he actually has five exits. And anyone who's a serial entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur meaning that you've built a company, sold it, built a company, sold it. He sold five of his companies. So, it just gives you the idea of he's been through this process before, starting with a company from nothing, building it up, and selling it to a, a major conglomerate like Amazon or Google, and he's done this five times. So that experience you know, is, is a good chance for people to ask him specific questions. How do you take an idea when you maybe have nothing, no capital or very little, and grow it to a point where a company will want to buy your invention or buy your product or buy your service? And a lot of... And, you know, inventors uh, and, and entrepreneurs, at the end of the day, that's what they're looking to get involved with in terms of finding somebody to buy their product or buy their service. And that's a good insight in terms of how to do that. And that's something he'll talk about uh, during that evening. So it's an educational event as well as some kind of pitching event. And if you can share that, uh, what's going to happen there with us? Absolutely. So that's the educational component. Uh, during the event, there are going to be a few startups that we've selected to pitch to the crowd, pitch to the investors, and essentially what's going to happen is that these companies, uh, the few that are pitching, have been chosen partially because their idea is solid, and we wanted to help them possibly get to the next level uh, with building their business. So the pitch event will be part of that whole night in terms of the, the, the panel speaking and then the entrepreneurs come up and kind of pitch their business to the crowd in the chance to possibly get funding, possibly develop new relationships, new customers uh, at the end of the night. Okay. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask Jeremy while we're live on the show, you can take a look and you'll see the chat feature. You can go ahead and uh, chat me your question. You can also email me at brian at gotinvention.com. I'm happy to ask his uh, question live. You can also... Uh, actually, Jeremy, is there still a chance for an inventor, entrepreneur to be able to present their idea at this event? Absolutely. Um, we, the, the deadline for the event actually was today, but what I can do, um, Brian, is we can extend that until uh, Wednesday. And what we can do is I'll send you the link after the show uh, so the people who are listening in can... Um, go directly there to apply uh, to present. And we're choosing, like I said, uh, three to four businesses to present during the live pitch. Uh, but I definitely, we definitely can do that for your listeners. Okay, great. By the way, Got Invention listeners, if you go to any of the pages of GotInvention.com or Got Invention Radio, you will see the SME logo that's on the bottom of every page. You click on there and it will bring you right to the event page to sign up and register, and also it will uh, tell you the agenda 
for the evening. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm going to be there. Should have a great uh, opportunity to meet a lot of the listeners and uh, and some pretty interesting people that you have on, on your panel there, Jeremy. Absolutely. One thing I want to say, um, and this kind of came to my came to my mind, sure. was the um, I'm not sure for listeners or in general. There's a new entity formed called B Corporation, and a B Corporation, if you know, entrepreneur or an inventor is looking to start a company, one of the first questions, and I'm not a lawyer, of course, but one of the first questions people ask is what entity I should develop. And our platform, a crowdfunding platform, only accepts C Corps and B Corps. And there's a specific reason for that. C corps are generally, you know, your corporate structure where you have um, you know, companies, Fortune 500 companies, big companies generally do that for tax reasons. But B corps, the reason we chose that and chosen to accept them on our platform was primarily because of their social mission. B corps allow the entrepreneur to have a dual focus. So instead of being a nonprofit, as an example, where a lot of investors may not invest because you're not generating uh, returns for a future profit, B Corps allow you to have a dual focus, profit and social good. And I think, you know, the trend for that is as we kind of manifest in terms of what you're trying to develop as a company, as a corporation, I would really recommend some people to take a look at B Corps and they can find more information about that at the website uh, B Corporation dot net net uh and they can find them more about b corps and what their mission is and what they do okay so it's b corporation dot net that is correct okay sounds good so jeremy with your experience that you have being in the venture capital world and seeing ideas come to life through different uh venture capital uh investments and and different types of funding uh strategies out there can you tell us and maybe you can help us and give some advice to inventors and entrepreneurs that are looking for funding for a product absolutely the first thing i would say is to look within your industry your products in when an inventor or an entrepreneur is looking for investment you know sometimes and i get the question all the time where do i go right how do i know um who to approach i would always say look within your industry because you'll find whatever industry you're in there are a variety of people who are available who know your market. And if, as an example, if somebody was approaching me to invest in healthcare, I am not really as familiar with that industry as I would with a financial product. But if an investor is interested in your industry and knows the industry, presenting it to them would be that much easier. So that's the first thing I would recommend. Um, someone who understands the industry and can bring that added value to come on board uh, and really grow your company. The second thing I would say is to study, study, study your market. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you have a market, it's a very niche or it's very general. The question the investor will ask, who's your market? Who's your target? And, you know, a lot of times people say, everyone in the whole world is my market. And I kind of look at that and say, you know, really try to define who the specific customer is because everyone can't be a market, because if everyone is, then no one's a market. Uh, so that's the second thing I would say, is to really study who is your target market and who would buy your product or service at the end of the day. And be, um, true, and be true about it. And then the third, the third uh, um, kind of more, more focused one is, who would possibly be your acquisition target? So think about this from an investor's perspective. And if you're an entrepreneur, who, as a team, say the investor and entrepreneur, who can we sell to? What bigger company would want to buy your, buy your product or service? As an investor, if you can bring that data to me and say, look, Amazon, Google, whoever you want to name, this fits great into the portfolio and you have done that market data, as an investor, that says to me, you've done your homework. This is the person I want to be on board with because it makes my job as an investor easier and I can trust that they're going to do their homework all the way through. So in general, those are the types of things uh, that investors, before writing that check, really want to know. And if you can sell them on that and really convince them that you know the market, know the customer, know who would potentially buy your product or service, that check, at the end of the day, is a lot easier to obtain. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Now, 
for the invest for the inventors 